Hello and welcome. I'm Philip Broussard, and here's what happened this week. A new video surfaced from Wednesday's deadly Taichung Metro accident. It shows that the train only started braking 41 seconds after the construction crane fell onto the tracks. The video renewed scrutiny of the metro system. Big Wong reports. 41 seconds. That's how much time there was to stop this train after a crane fell onto the rail track. But it didn't stop, and there was a fatal collision. The midweek accident in the central city of Taizong killed one person and injured 10 others. This video shows passengers realizing the obstruction and fleeing to other cars. An attendant is seen calling on the radio for an emergency stop to the train. Taizong's metro is driverless but has a 2 meter sensor on the front car which automatically comes to a stop if an obstruction is detected. But the emergency brakes were not triggered during the crane accident. After the video surfaced, Taiwan's transportation authorities began inspections on Taizong's metro and are looking into construction safety standards. The fatal accident in Taizong has also brought attention to the metro system in Taiwan's capital Taipei, which is larger and carries more people. Mm. One line of Taipei's metro system currently relies on passenger notification and a detection system. There are no personnel on the trains except when passing through tunnels. The fatal incident in Taizong has every metro system in the country reassessing its safety measures in search of solutions to any further system failures with the aim of keeping Taiwan's trains safe for all. John Su and Bing Wong for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's first ever group of female reservists wrapped up five days of training in the northern city of Taoyuan. Our reporter Hami Okan was there to see them in action. These soldiers are learning how to secure a park in Taiwan's northern city of Taoyuan. Among them are the country's very first group of female reservists. This particular group of women are veterans and they are here to refresh their skills. These women will undergo the same training as their male counterparts. They will learn how to hold and secure a position and how to defend against a biological attack. These are all skills all soldiers will need to master. Taiwan has an active military force of roughly 180,000 and 15% of that, or about 27,000, are women. However, Taiwan can mobilize, at least on paper, almost 2.3 million reservists to defend the country. This reservist training comes at a time when the country is facing an increased threat from China. And although military service isn't required for women, Taiwan has adjusted the length of its compulsory service. Taiwan recently extended its length of mandatory military service from four months to one year. It's all part of a push for the country to enhance its combat readiness. China seized Taiwan as part of its own territory and has threatened to invade the country to take full control. Officials here say that getting all soldiers ready is one of the first steps to boosting combat readiness. As Taiwan continues to bolster its defenses and further train its soldiers, officials here emphasize that safeguarding the country is a job for everyone, regardless of gender. Eason Chen and Hame Okan in Taoyuan City for Taiwan Plus. Foxconn founder and presidential hopeful Terry Guo has criticized the ruling party for interfering with the BNT vaccine purchases. The government said this was not true. Bing Wang has the story as well. Foxconn founder Terry Guo is out on the campaign trail and exchanging blows to Taiwan's government. Guo has accused the government of blocking the purchase of BNT COVID-19 vaccines in 2021. 
He says the government insisted on using the phrase independent government of Taiwan on the contract, something that a manufacturer of BNT and a Shanghai-based distributor couldn't accept. Go said he would disclose all the relevant information soon. It's an accusation that the government has denied. Although the government's initial purchase fell through, Taiwan did eventually get its hands on BNT. Goes Foxconn helped to purchase 10 million doses of the BNT vaccine alongside chip giant TSMC. They struck a deal with German manufacturer Biontech and a Chinese distributor, Shanghai Fuxing Pharmaceutical Group. The Thai administration was strictly against importing vaccines from China, but facing local pressure for the lack of vaccines, the government allowed the two companies to negotiate on behalf of Taiwan. The compromise was that the vaccines would be shipped directly from Germany. As Taiwan gears up for a crucial presidential election, potential candidates are trying everything to gain an advantage. With Go seeking the opposition Kuomintang nomination, he's looking to prove he's got what is needed to take on the ruling Democratic Progressive Party. But faced with strong government rebuttals, all eyes will be on whether he can back up his claims with evidence. John Su and Bing Wang for Taiwan Plus. A Taiwanese court has ruled in favor of a TV station trying to regain its broadcast license. A high-level court ruled against the National Communications Commission, or NCC, which refused to renew CTI TV's license three years ago. CTI sued the NCC for its decision. In 2020, the NCC cited repeated regulatory violations and internal management failures as reasons why it decided not to renew the station's broadcast license. The NCC said the owner also interfered in the news selection at the station. The court's ruling can still be appealed. Taiwan's transport minister has ordered pedestrians be given more time to cross at intersections nationwide. Wang Guotai's instructions come after a three-year-old girl was killed while crossing the street with her mother in Tainan earlier this week. Wang instructed all local governments in Taiwan to create pedestrian-only crossing timers, letting people start crossing before vehicles can move. All vehicles will have a red light when pedestrians start crossing. The number of road deaths in Taiwan has hit a 10-year high. According to the country's Traffic Safety Association, a big factor is the rise in delivery scooters. Joyce Tsung reports. An everyday risk for Taiwan's motorists. Here, road safety is such an issue that fatalities on the streets are eight times higher than other advanced economies. And that figure is still climbing. According to the country's Traffic Association's latest data, there were 3,085 road deaths last year, a record high since 2013. The death toll from the first two months of this year is also already up 10 percent from the same period last year. Taiwan's former transport minister thinks the boom in moped deliveries are a driving cause. Around 72 percent of people in Taiwan use food delivery services, as takeout is relatively cost and time effective. But the freelance delivery workers say they lack proper government support. In one union meeting, drivers took issue with delivery apps' free reign to set pay received per order. Coupled with the 12-hour working limits, many drivers race to complete as many orders as possible to make a living. Ultimately, the issue goes beyond riders or pedestrians. Given the country's low wages and rising inflation, the need to make ends meet looms large in the issue to keep Taiwan's streets safe. Andy Shreya and Joyce Sen for Taiwan Plus. 
Taiwan's main international airport has hit a passenger milestone. Taoyuan International Airport has seen 10 million passengers so far this year. Daily passenger volume in April reached about 70% of pre-pandemic levels. Airport officials predict they will see 28 million passengers this year. Taiwan lifted its pandemic entry restrictions last October. Taiwan's Trade Development Council has called for speeding up a free trade agreement with India. The South Asian country is one of the world's largest markets for electronic products, a key market for Taiwan's tech exporters. Joyce Tsung has this story as well. Information and communications tech, those are some of Taiwan's top exports. One of the largest markets for these products is India, now the world's most populous country after surpassing China earlier this year. As Washington and Beijing's battle for chipped supremacy intensifies, numerous companies along the global supply chain are looking to mitigate risks, and the Indian market has emerged as a key opportunity. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been pushing the Made in India and Digital India campaigns, eyeing his country's own chip-making ecosystem. Taiwan currently dominates the global market for advanced chip manufacturing. Still, the two countries appear to be finding areas to work together economically. Though Taiwan and India do not share official diplomatic relations, trade between the two jumped 185 percent between 2006 and 2021. And last year, Taiwan's exports to India reached 5.3 billion U.S. dollars, a 17 percent rise from 2021 and the highest amount on record. That trend is set to continue. Hi. I think uh, we are in the most interesting time frame and this 2023 will be written as a time for India-Taiwan investment push. Taiwan has been working to remove barriers to trade and investment with India, but there have been a few hiccups along the road. To protect its local firms, India set up tariffs on Taiwan-made IT goods, but this was struck down by the World Trade Organization last month. India lost over WTO, uh, World Trade Organization lawsuit for the uh, exportary, importary, that become a quite excitement because uh, Taiwan won on that. And that creates a very definite uh, picture that Taiwan seeing India as one of the most important partners. Amid tense U.S.-China relations, more countries are looking to diversify their export markets and production bases to avoid any fallout. As for Taiwan and India, a common focus on tech could usher in a valuable new partnership. James Lin and Joyce Zen for Taiwan Plus. An annual swimming event in central Taiwan has been cancelled because of the drought. Every June, thousands of people swim across Sun Moon Lake in Nantou County. The lake is a popular tourist attraction and reservoir. But earlier this week, water levels dropped below 60% of capacity. Organizers have decided to scrap this year's event. And one of Taiwan's biggest rock festivals is set to continue after an outcry over news it would be cancelled for good. The annual Ho Haiyan Rock Festival has drawn big crowds and big acts to the seaside of New Taipei since 2000. It was cancelled for three years due to COVID-19. Earlier in the week, New Taipei's tourism chief said it would be axed going forward in favor of a local cultural festival. But after music fans and bands voiced their disappointment, politicians intervened, meaning the show will go on. Thank you for watching. Here's what happened. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we leave you with images from the annual Puppy Prom Contest in California. I'm Philip Broussard. Take care and see you next week. For more stories from Taiwan and around the world, visit TaiwanPlus.com and download the app.